Hello, everybody. How you doing? So we got a couple people here hanging out. Hello, hello. Super excited about tonight. Let me know um, who you are. If you're coming to hang out with me, that you're here. Say hello. <clears throat> Ate spicy dinner. And um, it's kind of caught in my sinuses. Let me see if I can get this chair up. How you doing, everybody? Hi. <laughs> Say hi when you're here. I'd love to hear from you. We're going to talk about these stabilizers back here. That light kind of intense. It's better. Hello, Tim. Hello, Francie Joe. Hello, hello, hello. We're going to talk non tearaway stabilizers tonight. Tonight, tonight. What y'all doing? How was your day? Oh, what's up with my 880? <laughs> uh, my 880 is in timeout. It needs a the bobbin sensor replaced. And I have to <laughs> um I have to I choose to no I have to uh travel a few hours out of town to get it fixed. So I just haven't done it yet. So my 880 sits in timeout, unfortunately. <coughs> I'm hoping that not this week, but next week, I'll be able to get it um, up and running again. So I'm using my 790 right now. I love my 790, but I miss the throat space on this baby. I really do. Jean said, did you get the chair adjusted right? I did. <laughs> I was able to get the chair adjusted right. Thank you. <laughs> I've been recording kind of a mess back here and it was picked up. But I've been recording videos all day. So, yeah. That's my life right now. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Francie Joe says, great. We have had two days of melting. Oh, good. Yay, above freezing. That's really good. I can hear my cat meowing. What is she doing? What is she doing? All right. You know, I'll chat. Oh. Ooh. Someone just messaged me and said that the reminder email didn't go out. I apologize. Well, darn. I wonder why not. I wonder why not. Completely understand. Mine has an, uh, Tim's 880 has this issue with the thread cutter. When I touch it while cleaning, it acts up and causes the gears to come up. It will not sew. I wonder why. I wonder what it's doing. Hello, Sheila. Oh, Helen, did you get, you got your reminder? Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Sheila and Helen are here. Welcome, my friends. Yeah, my 880, I limped along as as long as I could. Um, I knew that the bobbin case was going bad, that the bobbin sensor was coming bad. And I just couldn't. I just couldn't. Uh, you know, it's like Christmas. So I'm like, I'm not going to take it now at this point. And I limped along, and now it is very bad. It is broken. So. <laughs> oh, Bernina says it's touchy and something's out of sync. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm ready, Sheila. Sorry, was that loud? I'm ready, Sheila. What is your question about multi-hooping? Oh, good gracious. Chat about that for a minute, and then we'll... We'll get right down to it. Right down to it. Yeah. 
Anybody else have questions? Go ahead and ask them. You know, I'm not, I'm not tough on this. Next week, we'll be talking about why I hate tearaway stabilizers. Be saucy. Little spicy rant day. Um, yeah. Hello, Sue. No, no Facebook. I'm, I don't go live ever on Facebook anymore. Sorry about that. Sue, did you get a reminder email? I don't know why the reminder email didn't send out. I'll have to go figure that out. I'm sure it had to do with scheduling. Okay. Sheila, are you on an 880? Well, bummer, Sue. I don't know what the heck happened there. I bet some people will be missing because the reminder email didn't go out. Um, Sheila, are you on an 880? Sheila's asking about... Okay, I thought so. It's hard to keep the machine straight, but multi-hooping without doing it the conventional way. Um, and were you using pinpoint placement for your multi-hooping? Oh, France got that. Oh, oh. Were you using pinpoint placement on your multi-hooping? That's my question. Let's see if I can do this fast. Subscribe to a form. Uh, subscribe to YouTube Live. Doo -doo -doo. You didn't receive an email either. What the heck? Yeah, so multi hooping, um, th and this is the difficulty with multi hooping, is it is very hard to get perfect. And honestly, I'm not the person, um, you know, I love to admit when I'm not right <laughs> or the, not the right person for the job, I'm definitely willing to do that. Um, but if you get a chance, the person I would recommend to teach you multi-hooping is Claudia Donnell. And she works on a Bernina, I believe. I believe she even works on a Bernina, so she really knows what she's doing with them. Um, because she works with all the Bernina dealers I know. Um, that's what I would do. I would check out Claudia Donnell. She does incredible things on multi-hooping. There's also Amelie, Amelie Scott. And she does quilting in the hoop. So that's a lot of multi-hooping. Any multi-hooping I have done, um, I purposefully worked in some space for there to be um, no... Oh, yes, I can do that. Uh, Claudia... I think that's how you spell it. <laughs> Claudia Donnell. Um, I was not able to line up my registration marks perfectly. Yeah. You know, quite frankly, I don't know enough about multi-hooping. Um, I can do good enough for government work. I build in a lot of buffer for myself when I have to do that, like purposeful ways that it's not that big of a deal. But that's not always going to work. So, uh, Claudia Donnell and um, Amelie Scott. I don't know if Claudia Donnell is on YouTube. I know Amelie Scott is. So, that will help. Because um, Claudia Donnell does big, multi-hooped, um, like wall hangings and things right there. I'm not sure why this didn't send. It seems to have disappeared. So I don't know. I don't know what I did. I, I have no idea. All the others are set. Uh, 
Let me just get this sent. Click below to join me live or watch the replay later. It is such a short and sweet email. <laughs> but that's what we've got to do, y'all. Um, the other day I was talking to a woman in my Instagram DMs and she said, <laughs> she was like, yeah, I hate when teachers aren't organized. And I was like, ooh, you might want to make sure that I am the um, teacher for you because I can be a little squirrely. So perfect. Uh, is that... Okay. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Sheila called me a peach. So my night's made. That's it. You guys, can you see how long this hair is? When I started quarantine, it was above my shoulders. What? And I've given myself haircuts because that's apparently all I'm going to do with my cosmetology license. So let's get started. Let me know if you get that email that I just now sent out. Here's the deal. Hello, Tanisha. <laughs> Harry Peach sounds There's something about it that sounds weird. But yes, I am. All this hair. Oh, and my shirt. Perfect. Um, I don't like tearaways. We're going to talk in depth about why I don't like tearaway next week. Next week. Um, which will just be a rant and a fun time and a goofy time. You, um, maybe we should eat spicy food. We're going to be super spicy about it. But I want to give you some alternatives, some things that could be better used. I'm trying not to go into the tearaway rant. <laughs> I'm trying to save that for next week. I'm going to give you some stabilizers that will be better used in your sewing room than medium weight tearaways. Hello, Lynn. Yes. Yeah. I have now reached over a year with no cut or color. <laughs> and one of my closest friends is my hairstylist. So he's like, when are you coming back in? I'm like, never, never. But doo -doo -doo. let's do this. Let's kick it off. There are links. There are affiliate links. Thank you so much to all y'all who seek out my affiliate links, go find them when you're going to um, go purchase stuff through OESD to make sure that you're using the affiliate links. I just really appreciate it. It has helped me out a lot. Um, yeah, it's just another way to support Tough Kitten Crafts. So thank you. But I do want to let you know that those are affiliate links. So when you click, it drops a cookie, that cookie stays in there for a little while. And then you, um, when you make a purchase it, I get a commission off that. So thank you. The first thing we're gonna talk about, and I know y'all have heard me talk about this one before. It's my favorite thing, fusible woven, fusible woven. If you are working on, I have three of these that are unopened. I have three of them that are <laughs> opened. Um, I love fusible woven, I would buy it by the caseload, if I could. Um, it is an all over fusible for woven fabrics. So, my camera weird. It is not for your knits, it is for your wovens. Fusible wovens for, fusible woven for your wovens. So, that's your quilts and cottons, um, linen, anything that's, you know, not knit. So it's great. I used it on this dude to get that nice crisp texture to it. That nice, um, it really gives that professional look. Oh, and we were just talking about Claudia Donnell. Claudia Donnell uses fusible woven on everything because like I said, she is often doing, did I spell Claudia and Amelie Scott right? Did you guys check that out? 
keep writing Claudio. And my ex-boyfriend is named Claudio, so it's really giving me a hard time. Here we go. Here we go, Claudia's creations. She does big wall hangings. Um, she does these big wall hangings and they're often multi-hooped, often all done together. It's not like it's a lot of piecing these things together, um, which a lot of like OESD and people like that do it where you embroider the block and then piece it not Claudia. So she'll help you with the multi-hooping. The whole reason why I'm talking about her yet again is because I know she uses a lot of fusible woven for that. I was seeing February 2020. What day is it? She's doing a virtual workshop. Oh! Did somebody hear her do? Somebody in... Oh, who was that? Okay, I won't sit and think about that. But if you go into the Facebook group, somebody shared my sewing room. It's my sewing room and it's it's not my sewing room. The name of the pattern is called my sewing room. And it's a Claudia Donnell thing. And she's doing a, work, a virtual workshop on that right now. You can go check out her other things. But the reason why I'm bringing her back up is because she uses a lot of fusible woven because it's so useful especially when you have a ton of stitches going on. Now I'm just looking at Claudia's um, workshop schedule, but she's got good workshops on there. You can join some of the uh, online ones coming up, <laughs> or if you're so inclined, if she's got a in-person one coming up near you, um, then you can do that too. Okay, so fusible woven, I'm obsessed. It comes in white and black doesn't matter. It, it, depending on your fabric, it matters if you're using white or black. Um, yeah, that's it. Hello, Lynette. How are you? Thanks for joining us. You see the reflection in my glasses? My light isn't up high enough. Okay, so if usable woven is a great one to have in your... <laughs> is a great one to have in your sewing room. I just feel like she's a little all over the place, but um, she's a beauty. You want her for your quilt blocks. I leave it in there. You can take it out if you want. I don't know why you would because it's a great interfacing to keep in pillows and um, quilt blocks and table toppers, wall hangings, whatever. She's fantastic. She's the beauty. The link, of course, is in the description. <laughs> All right, this is the real, and I don't have one that's unwrapped. The others have beautiful wrapping on them. But if I could get you, if I, not you, if I could get stores all over, the U.S. to sell this to beginners instead of tear away, I'd be a very happy woman because my job as an educator would be a little easier. So this is medium weight cutaway. Medium weight cutaway. Um, oh, the labels. This might I lied. This one's heavyweight cutaway, but we're going to pretend that this is medium weight cutaway. Cutaway has red labels with OESD. So anytime you see something that's red, you know, it's a cutaway through OESD. So people will say, how do I know it's cutaway? To which I say, can you tear it? One time my boyfriend tore it. I think he was just trying to prove to me how tough he is. Um, if you can't tear it, <laughs> it's not a tear away. It's likely a cutaway. Medium weight cutaway is the best thing. It works on the biggest range of fabrics, the biggest range of stitch counts. It works on all sorts of 
works on all sorts of projects and it's never going to leave your embroidery. So as good as your embroidery looks when it's done, it's how good it's always going to look. This will stay behind it. It softens with washing. Um, it doesn't shrink or anything like that. I've had no issues with that. And the reason why I say medium weight instead of a heavy weight, even though this one's heavy weight. We're going to pretend it's medium weight. The reason why I say medium weight instead of a heavy weight <coughs> is that you can do two layers. Oh, come back. Okay. You can do two layers of medium weight to equal a heavy weight. So that's really nice. Really useful really useful um because don't forget that don't forget that you can layer two lighter pieces to make a bigger piece <laughs> two lighter stabilizers to make a heavier weight stabilizer that's what i'm trying to tell you y'all are quiet tonight any questions any thoughts poems concerns for me my well-being <laughs> whatever So, so far we have two cutaways. I love cutaway. Maybe instead of doing why I hate cutaway, or why I hate tearaway, I should do why I love cutaway because I just do. I can tell you nine times out of 10, if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna grab for a cutaway. I'm gonna do it. Ha ha, look at these, you guys have great questions. <laughs> this is fantastic. How about under decorative stitching? Um, the medium weight, I just had a thought, did you see it hit my brain? I'm wondering how fusible woven would be so good under decorative stitches, be so good. Um, it'd be beautiful. Fusible woven would be great under decorative stitches, I think. Um, and the, the cutaway would too. The cutaway would too. If you're going to stabilize under decorative stitches, so let's say we're going to, I know I have just like a little piece of fabric. Let's say we're gonna do decorative stitches right here. I wouldn't, um, and we're gonna do decorative stitches just, just down the center with a cutaway. I wouldn't stabilize just down the center. I'd stabilize the whole thing or do a piece that's bigger, do my decorative stitching and cut it down to match because since cutaway is more intense, it can shadow through, um, make weird ripples in your fabric, things like that. So when I do cutaway, I kind of leave it all. I mean, I can't even say that, but if I'm doing a medium weight cutaway, um, I will leave it in there. I won't talk about that yet because we'll talk about it in a second. Okay. <laughs> so yes, I would use either of those. I would use fusible. Tearaway is great for, oh, I don't want to get on my rant. <laughs> I keep threatening to do it. <laughs> I don't want to get on my rant. Um, I... Tearaway's got a great time and place. Under decorative stitching would be a great time and place for that as well, if you have it. That's why I save, by the way, save all of your stabilizer scraps. Okay, maybe not all, but save a lot of your stabilizer scraps because that's one of the great things you can do with it. And one of the videos I'm coming out with is how to use those scraps and reuse pieces and things like that. Kind of money saving. See how it goes. Okay, I love this question from Sue. I don't understand why you would use two layers just because you don't have heavy weight or some other reason. Yes to both. Yes to both. Um, it's because it's yes to both. <laughs> if you're somebody who doesn't have, oh, I always cause chaos when I do these things on the fly. <laughs> all these stabilizers under here right and they're actually all over the place they're all back here 
If you're somebody who doesn't have all of these, and you don't want to have all of them, because you have, sorry, that's got to be so loud for you. Um, I just wheel all over the place now. I just wheel all over the place like I'm a little robot. Um, if you don't want to have all these stabilizers, you just want to keep a few or you're new to it and you don't want to get a bunch of stuff. You can, I would recommend getting lighter weight things because you can do two layers and you can build up to heavier weight items. If you get the heavyweight items, you don't always necessarily want that. It can be um, too intense, especially with cutaway. Caraway, it's like if you ask, if you go for a heavyweight, might not be that bad when you really wanted a lightweight. Um, but with cutaway, you want to be careful with that just because it can affect the drape and change things like that about your fabric. But sometimes it's actually just more effective to do two layers of a medium weight instead of one layer of a heavyweight because you can't do two layers of a heavyweight, right? Or, um, like one layer of a heavyweight might not be enough stabilization. You're not going to go to two layers of a heavyweight. I wouldn't do that. Instead, I would do two layers of a medium weight. Make sense? I hope that makes sense. Tell me if I need to rephrase that. Yeah. Doo -doo -doo. I also like to layer um, having medium weight. I like to layer, that's what this is, medium weight cutaway and fusible woven. They layer together gorgeously because you need, with fusible woven, you really want another stabilizer with it, a tear away or a cutaway, depending. If you're gonna make this into a quilt, I've said it a thousand times, but just in case you haven't heard me say it, if you were to make this into a quilt, we'd use the fusible woven and the tear away. Okay, if you guys have I mean, I'm not saying that you guys don't normally show up like on point, but you guys have some awesome questions tonight. <laughs> I'm loving them. Um, Sheila said, I love my stable stick because I can reposition my fabric for large designs if they fall out of the boundaries. Heck yes. And we're going to talk about stable stick in a second because I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with sticky stabilizers. And I thought that was a bad thing for a long time. Because a lot of people will tell you like, oh, don't use a sticky stabilizer for everything. Don't float everything. That's really kind of a hobbyist opinion because a lot, a lot of um, people, I don't want to say industrial, but um, people who are even running embroidery businesses or industrial embroidery, they'll do a lot of floating and sticky stabilizers is what I've realized. So it's pretty cool. Do, do, do. That's okay, Sheila. I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer that again. Um, I think it would be great under buttonholes. Which one were you talking about, Francie Joe, for under the buttonholes? The um, fusible woven or the medium weight cutaway? Which one? Tearaway is also, or tearaway. <laughs> tearaway is fantastic for buttonholes. Keep your tearaway for those. Um, feel like my, sometimes I get a Midwest accent and I feel like it just came out for those. Um, I love all ideas about money saving techniques. Me too. I'm realizing that mm, some of those things are a little more hidden from the hobbyists. <laughs> so um, the video that I plotted out today that will be showing up, God knows when, but it will be coming. Um, I'm going to do some of the money saving techniques and I'll test them out. Okay. Because I'm all about breaking the rules until it doesn't work. And then we're like, oops, we'll fix it. So we'll try them out. Um, okay. Sheila asked this as I was talking about it, but we're going to come back to this. Sheila said, if you're embroidering a quilt top that you will end up quilting, would you recommend cutaway and leave? Then she said, oops, how much would you leave in place? Um, I, so the, okay. And I know Tim knows this because we did class together about it. 
fusible woven, one layer of fusible woven for your quilt block. And then, depending, oh, I have another option for you too. Um, fusible woven for your quilt block. I do the whole quilt block because I'm going to leave it in there. And I like the drape that it gives. And then you could either, if you're floating, we're going to pretend this is our quilt block. It's a very weird quilt block, but it could happen, right? It's a side of something. So let's say we're embroidering this to go into our quilt. I'm going to just write somebody's name in it and then piece it in there. I would do fusible woven all over the whole back of this. This cannot be hooped. That's the word. This cannot be hooped. So I would do sticky stabilizer, stick it down, embroider it out, be done. Um, if it's a whole piece of fabric, um, we'll say like a fat quarter. Uh, we'll say... <laughs> <laughs> I like having visual help, but I might not have one right here. Oh, I do. My tool of pinks I was just looking at. So if we have this whole fat quarter, I do this for class where we cut these in half. Um, where we cut these in half so we can hoop the whole thing. So I would only do fusible woven on the 10 by 10 square that's going to be the block, but then hoop the whole thing with that in the center. I don't know if that makes sense without a visual aid. Um, and then tear away. And then I would tear away all the tear away and leave all of the fusible woven. Uh, Cause the fusible woven will give nice drape and be soft. However, it will, um, the tear away will help it embroider correctly and then be gone, which is really nice. We don't want to add more like, She's a really nice table topper. Do you like how I'm just throwing things and picking them up? She's a nice table topper. She would be a weird blanket. Is that hair? No. Oh. She'd be a weird blanket because she's a little stiff. Yeah, I think it'd be creepy. I think it would make, I think the cutaway would make your quilt feel cheap. You know, how then it like doesn't really drape nice or anything like that. We don't want to affect the drape of a quilt. That's the gloriousness of a quilt. So, ta-da! Little things, the flexibility, yes. So good. I love floating things. So Francie Jo said, I think it would be, I think the medium weight cutaway would be great under buttonholes for scraps. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then you could just cut it away. Certainly on stretchy um, fabric. Because if we stretch the buttonholes, sometimes threads can pop or we can lose the definition of that buttonhole. So that'd be really nice. That'd be really good. Yeah. Save your scraps always because um, save your scraps always. You can float it under a hoop. You can, maybe that's what we'll, maybe that's one of the next ones we'll do. I'll add money saving tips for one of the next ones. It'll be a good one. Um, yeah, so the thing with cutaway is, is it's going to stay there and stay showing up. So you just want to be sure that it's nothing that you're like going to be annoyed that a little bit of that cutaway is still living in that fabric forever. It'd be good. It'd be very good. Okay. I chose Stitch H2O to go as my top three because I didn't want it to be all cutaways. <laughs> I felt like maybe I should choose a wash away. And Stitch H2O is a great one. Oh, see, even now I'm feeling like I should have maybe chose Aquamesh plus. Anyway, Stitch H2O is a great one. The reason why I think every beginner and newbie should have Stitch H2O, I mean, not just beginners and newbies. I think that every machine embroiderer should have this in their stash. It is a water soluble topper. Okay. So that means it's going to wash away, right? It's a wash away. The blue label means wash away. That means it's going to disappear with water. 
but it's going to control the pile of fabrics. So if you're doing minky, if you're doing uh, towels, anything with that nap to it, with, with a nap to it, you're going to want stitch H2O. Now, this is really best for it. Let's see. Does it have a recommendation on there? No. Keeps your stitches from sinking into the nap of the fabric. Um, they have one that melts away with an iron. And that's better for high pile fabrics with light design so that they don't start poking through with washings. But this will be great for your medium to low pile and nap fabrics. That'll be great for that. Um, mm -hmm. The reason why you need it is because everybody wants to do towels. It is one of our great milestones as embroiderers is to get to do the monogrammed towels or the personalized towels in some way. And that's really nice. If you don't care about towels, you might be a quilter who cares about minky and this is how you're going to do your minky or your cuddle fabric as well. So I do think it's important to have it in your stash. It's much more specialty, um, but this is also another thing. Any wash away. I mean, it might not be the best choice, but <laughs> you could use this under buttonholes as well. Um, it will wash away. So it would be just to give it stability while creating it, but you can do it. You could do it. Somebody was just saying um, under their couching, they use a wash away stabilizer and some of the decorative stitching and things like that so that they have that stabilization to create the stitches, but it washes away, which I have not tried. But the person who told me this is a sewing genius. So I trust it. <laughs> I freaking trust it. Um, yes, Sheila, yes. Um, when we're talking about towels, when we're talking about t-shirts, which we're going to talk about a little bit more in a second. Oh gosh. Why did I do this on a black shirt? You can see all the fuzz and everything. Um, when we're talking about t-shirts, quilts, towels, drape really comes into play. It's one of the major things that we have to consider when choosing a stabilizer because it comes into play in enough items, um, which can be the problem. The heavyweight cutaway or even a medium weight cutaway is our drape. So, yeah, definitely important. Remember, as my dear friend Lynette says, <laughs> I've, I think I've finally got this Um Lynette, I think I finally have this quote down. All roads lead home. <laughs> I always say it wrong. But all roads lead home. There are a bazillion gajillion ways that you can stabilize something um, and do a good job with it. But sometimes we can make better choices. <laughs> Thank you, Lynette. <laughs> I finally did it right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there are there are a lot of great choices to make. Um, no one way to get there. You're gonna do a good job. My soapbox moment lost its luster, but um, drape is one of those things that that gets left out when making good decisions, and it needs to kind of be key, especially on t-shirts. Now I just made some TikToks in this shirt. Actually, I should probably get that video out tonight. Doo, doo, doo. This is my shirt I just did. I did this in about two minutes. <laughs> oh, look at her go. I did it in about two minutes uh, before I joined the class. And I realized that that's what I want for you. I want you to be able to do these embroidery projects in like two minutes before you go do something else. That would be great. That is real like machine embroidery confidence. The reason why I bring this up is because I do have two honor honorable mentions. Um, one of the things I got hung up with on creating this list is. And. 
One of the things I got hung up with, and one of the things that um, I don't think it's taken into consideration enough, is the fact that what stabilizers you should have in your stash totally depends on what kind of sewing you do, right? Like um, we have Lynn here. Lynn is a incredible garment sewist. So I, she can probably kind of tune out on a lot of the quilting. Do you do, do you do um, quilting as well, Lynn? She can tune out. And then vice versa. We I know we have Francie, Joe, and Sue here who are my quilters. I know that because they're coming. I mean, I know a lot of y'all are quilters, first off. I know that. I know Sheila, Tim. I know a lot of y'all. Um, Tanisha, I know a lot of y'all are. But um, I call out Sue and Francie Joe because they're coming over. They came over to my community from Holly Ann Knight, who teaches free motion quilting. So the types of stabilizer I would recommend to each and every one of you differs, which would be different. We'll say, we're going to say Lynn, we're going to say Sue, and we're going to say Kate, because I like garment, I like a home deck sewing. I kind of sew whatever needs sewn. I don't, I'm not really a quilter, definitely not a garment sewist yet, um, which I've said yet forever on that, but ta -da! So making a list is a little tough, but I tried to get a good general list. That's the word. General is what I was looking for. So Lynn says, I don't quote, but I have mad respect for them. I mean, how could you not with that? With the stuff they do and the stuff they get done. I have to finish that baby quilt, y'all. That baby's going to be walking before I get that quilt to him. All right. So I added two honorable mentions because I was feeling pressed to give you guys a good general list. One of which is Polly Mesh. Oh, see, Francie Joe makes all of it. Francie Joe's. <laughs> and then there's Francie Joe's who do it all. You're the other category. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, so I added poly mesh to this. Poly mesh is a, look at that back of it. It's beautiful back of the embroidery. Poly mesh is a cutaway stabilizer. It is a polyester mesh. That's why they call it poly mesh. It is lightweight, but it holds a ton of stitches. Easily doubled up. That's what I did here two layers of it, which is overkill. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty, uh, I probably could have got away with one layer, but I wanted to make sure it looked good. So I overstabilized two layers there. Um, and it's nice and soft. I am a sensitive baby. I am a delicate flower of a human. And this hasn't bugged me at all. I wore it yesterday through a whole three hour class with Bernina. Yesterday, yeah. And then I wore it today to make some videos in and it does not bother me at all. Super nice on the back, feels great. Um, it is polyester, <laughs> told you that. So you might have to pre-shrink it. You can do that with your iron. Um, sometimes people will throw it in a washer and dryer. I guess if you're putting other fabric through the wash. You can do that. I wouldn't do it on its own. I would just um, get it some heat. Don't put the iron on it, but get the hot heat next to it or a pressing cloth kind of thing. People think it shrinks. It doesn't shrink. It melts. It's polyester. And it doesn't melt a ton, but it melts just enough that if this were... Now, this was a shirt that I mostly slept in that now has embroidery on it. I don't even... <laughs> I actually just realized it doesn't even really fit anymore. Thanks, pandemic. Um, but it's not sure I'm going to iron. It will go in a hot dryer. We'll see how that goes. I think it'll be fine. But if this were something that I wanted to take heat to, or if I wanted to take heat to my embroidery after, even if you're just pressing it after the embroidery, you'd want to pre-shrink your polyester stabilizer. So um, 
This is why I got excited talking to Sheila because fusible poly mesh also comes in. Okay. Poly mesh comes in black, beige, and white, which is great for two reasons, different fabric colors and different skin tones. Okay. That plays a part too um, in the whole shadowing effect of um, embroidery designs. So that's really nice that you can have these different um, colors. I could grade these. I literally chopped this off, threw it on, and got on camera for a class. Um, so you could grade these seams by making this inner one um, closer to your embroidery and the outer one a little further out. That way it kind of helps blur any shadows and lines. I um, got really excited because something I haven't done, do I have any? Something I haven't done, but I have heard incredible things about is using the fusible poly mesh in your quilts because it's so strong. Um, it would obviously be dependent on your, oh, I think I have to do, I have that blog post with the side-by-side -side comparison. I think I'm going to have to do that. Fusible poly mesh versus fusible woven on a quilt block. What do you think? I think I have to. I think I have to. Um, once again, the ironing would be tough. So there's that. Um, but it is so soft and has such nice drape to it. Noemi said that is adorable. I can't believe that stabilizer does not make you itchy. It does. It really doesn't. And it could have to do with the shirt and the placement of it because it's right up here. here. Guess what we gonna do? There was a brief moment where I forgot what I was doing a tiny brief moment and I almost took this shirt off. I mean, I have a sports bra on, but nobody needs to see that. You pay more for that. Okay. It could be right where it sits because there's a little bit of gapping there. How cute. Da -da -da. But yeah, super, super nice. I will do that. Sheila, I'm going to write it down right now. I have gotten so much better at writing things down and now I just forget some things, not everything. <laughs> um, fuse woven verse fuse poly mesh. What are other things you want to see compared? Do y'all want to see any of that? Do, I mean, do you all have an opinion on that? I might be able to add them to the list. Okay, comparison list, fusible woven versus fusible poly mesh. Another one I'm gonna do is very classic, like tear away versus cut away on towels or um, things like that. But I like these kind of more clever ones. Some little different options there that I haven't explored yet. And Noemi is in that six week class with me. Thank you so much for joining that, Noemi. So much fun. And we talked about how on um, now this only comes in white, so it wouldn't work on this shirt really. Um, if there is, if it is itchy for you, you can go ahead and use this gentle touch backing. This gentle touch backing which is a nice little soft um, fusible for knits that will block it from rubbing on your skin or anything like that. So that's really good. Um, that's another option. Like I said, doesn't come in black. We should really ask them to have it come in black, but. <laughs> Noemi did a great shirt in class this week. It was garment week, so we did denim and t-shirts. And she did this great shirt and um, then at the end spilled, she confessed how little um, confidence she had in the, in her, uh, <laughs> in the class, in your embroidery abilities, a mixture of the two. And she showed the front of the shirt and there was like, it was her holes or was there something spilled on it? 
I was like, you can't even wear it now. But she'll redo another one. Mm. I was going to see if the white would show through really bad, but I don't know that it would. You might still be able to do the white on there. That was a lot of work to get this apart for nothing, but sounded like a good idea at the time. <laughs> no, not the class me. <laughs> you did a great job with that shirt. I wish you could wear it. You're going to have to do another one. You're going to have to do another one because it's so cute. I might copy you. That was a really cute shirt. Really cute shirt. Great question, Sheila. Do you hoop all these stabilizers between the inner and outer hoops, or do you ever use spray adhesive? I never um, do spray adhesive. All of these I hoop between the inner and outer hoops. And um, all of these I hoop between the inner and outer hoops. I even do it with my sticky stabilizer and you don't even necessarily have to do it with your sticky stabilizer. I know that a lot of people who embroider for business don't do it for their sticky stabilizer. They will, um, and what I mean is they will take their, excuse me, I'm in shorts. It kind of looks like I'm pantless, but I, I am in shorts. I realized that last time I pushed away. I'm all caught up here. I'm all caught up. Okay. This is sticky stabilizer I did for the class the other day. Um, and I was recording with it today. It's actually between those layers. But sometimes people will just have the layers closed. Have the layers closed and wrap the sticky stabilizer around the back and stabilize that way. You have to be very sure that it is very stuck to the outside of your hoop to do that. Um, I've done it, it worked fine when I did it. I wouldn't do it with this because this is not OESD stabilizer. This is some other brand and it is not that sticky. So it would not work. It would be bad. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna see if I can show you what that would look like. It's been stuck together for a while, so it's pretty sticky. I swear, something, is something crazy happening? Is something excited, exciting in the world happening? Because I have 8,000 text messages and I swear nobody cares to text me until I'm teaching a class. Okay. So like this, my inner and outer hoop are stuck together. They're just together like normal. And they are tightened up. Doo -doo -doo. They are tightened up and it's just stuck to the back. So that then ultimately, it's like that. Um, like I said, and this one might be fine. You want to be very sure that it's very well stuck. Um, because if it starts to come off, you're royally screwed. <laughs> That's it. <sighs> oh, Lynn, are you talking about the uh, gentle touch backing? Lynn said, I got some and used it for my grandbaby's Valentine's outfits. Works perfect. Um, I'm, so, I'm assuming this one because I think that's when that popped up. It's so soft. It's so soft. But like I said, I am with the ADHD, you know and being a delicate flower. I'm very sensitive to tags, to embroidery, to anything. I can, sometimes just my hair on my neck will drive me crazy. And not bad, the poly mesh is not bad. Oh shoot, it's already nine o'clock. Okay, the last honorable mention is stable stick cutaway. Um, cutaway because I love cutaway. It works on more things. It is so very useful. Stable stick because all the reasons we have mentioned throughout the day about floating, which is really nice. You can patch this. I'm going to do a video on patching. Um, bye, Sue. Thanks for hanging out. We're going to go too because good gracious. I felt like I'm going to end early. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to end 
a little late, but um, cutaway is so good. Stable stick is so good. Um, I would highly recommend you have a sticky stabilizer that's tear away and cutaway. But you know, if it comes down to tear away or cutaway, every time I'm going to choose cutaway. Every time. Every time. I'm going to avoid going on that ranch tonight, but every time. I just like cutaway. Um, useful on the most amount of fabrics and the most amount of uh, the biggest range of fabrics, the biggest range of stitch counts. Yeah, it's wonderful. <sighs> I'm interested in seeing your patching technique. Absolutely. So I do have a blog post about it. It's um, I am transferring, if you hadn't noticed, whole house just shifted. Um, I am transferring over to video content more. But I do have I do have a blog post about this. So that is do do do. Oh, I forgot that I have to mark these things that I just randomly put in here. Blog post about hooking techniques. If I don't be very clear with these comments, <laughs> then people will be like, but where was the blog post? And that's my bad. That's for me. Bye, Lynn. See you next week. Have a good week. Thanks for hanging out with me today and on Monday. Um, so yeah, that's it. Have cutaways. Have cutaways, love cutaways. Next week, we're just gonna have a fun old time. Um, talking about why I hate tearaway. Um, we'll also be being positive in that one and why I love um, the other stabilizers. Um, just why tearaway should not be the go-to, which it can be a lot. So yeah. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me. I'm going to add the upcoming blog posts as well. I mean, nope. Rewind, take two. I'm going to add the um, some more lives that are coming up so that you always know like a month ahead what's going on. And yeah, I have my first real YouTube video that is gonna come out tomorrow. So hopefully you get a notification about that. It is my scissor tail stitches haul video. I did a shopping spree and then um, I unboxed it for you. So it's a lot of fun. Thank you so much, everybody. I love you. Yeah. I'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs> Bye.